my name is Mina Gilligan. I'm an artist and I'm based here in Melbourne. I work with uh, drawing, painting and collage and I make works that are largely very playful and colourful and very inspired by the 1960s and 1970s sort of aesthetic. So today I'm coming uh, at to you from my home studio. It's very cosy in here, uh, meaning sort of small and, and a little cramped, but I'm hoping to bring you a project that you can all kind of participate in at home, I'm wanting to make collages out of printed material in the home. So I'm calling this col this uh, exercise junk mail collage. So largely just using junk mail that gets delivered, you know, quite often. Uh, you know, I have a bit of a um, guilty pleasure of sort of reading it, but instead of throwing it in the recycling bin, um, I want to work together to make a collage work out of some of this junk mail that we have lying around the home. So it's a project for adults and children alike. You can do it in a group as a family at home or just by yourself. And um, all the materials you should just have lying around your house. So yeah, I hope uh, you enjoy it and we'll get started. In regards to materials, what you will need, a glue stick, just regular old, um, you know, glue stick you should have in your pencil case from school or, you know, lying around from a little craft project you did another time. Um, doesn't need to be a glue stick, it could just be, uh, you know, different um, type of glue, not in stick form, but glue stick is probably your best bet. Scissors for cutting out uh, pieces of imagery from your junk mail or printed, you know, ephemera around the house. You'll need a blank piece of paper, so that'll be the base for your collage. Uh, it doesn't even have to be blank, it could be ripped out of a magazine or just something to sort of stick everything down on. And then lastly, obviously, you will need a whole bunch of junk mail and things uh, that have images in them. I've also got a little bit of sort of um, wrapping paper, some old wrapping paper from Christmas um, that I got from an op shop, um, little cat thing. I've also got some old tissue paper, uh, washi tape that I had around the home. Basically any kind of paper ephemera that you have lying around the house will work for this project. So it's pretty much anything goes. As long as it will stick down on the paper, go for it. So usually I make collages with uh, books from the 1960s and 1970s that I collect. You can probably see some of them around me in this space. But because this is a project uh, with things that are around the home, I'm going to just be using things that um, would be, you know, applicable to everyone and what everyone may have sort of lying around. So it's going to look a little bit different to my, you know, usual work, but I think I can still make something interesting, um, yeah, using this odd assortment of things that I've sort of run up. So let's get started. So the first step is to cut out some imagery from your paper junk mail source material. So here's some I prepared earlier. A lot of fresh produce, some art supplies from an art supply catalogue, little ice cream, so when you're cutting, you know, there's there's no rules if you want to cut things sort of neatly, you know, around the perimeter of the image, or if you wanted to cut things in a bit more of an abstract way. Um, either way, you know, works works well and, and we'll work in, um, you know, assembling that all together when we get to the composition kind of stage. So this is going to be quite food themed, I think, because a lot of the junk mail that I had was very food focused. And so you want to cut everything out uh, first. So you want to have everything kind of cut out and spread out in front of you, just so you know um, what you've got and what kind of, um, you know, things could kind of come out of the, the group of imagery that you've sort of cut out. Uh, the other thing I was going to do with some of the sort of uh, patterned paper that I just had lying around was maybe cut some shapes out of that, some more abstract shapes. So you might have a collection of, uh, you know, imagery like I've got here. So, um, yeah, just my junk mount imagery and then maybe some shapes from, um, yeah, patterned paper or from the wrapping paper. I haven't quite cut that up yet. Um, so, yeah, you've got to cut everything out. It's quite meditative as well. So enjoy that process. 
and then sort of have everything sort of laid, laid out in front of you so you can see everything you have. I found some uh, cellophane, some sort of iridescent cellophane, so I kind of cut out a circular shape out of that. I found some, uh, you know, coloured paper as well. I cut a few shapes out of that just to break it up, you know, with the imagery and then some more abstract sort of shapes. So I've got a fair bit of stuff here. You might not end up using everything you've cut out, but it's just great to be able to sort of curate what you like to use, what you'd like to use in the final uh, product. So you want to start thinking about composition. So thinking about uh, things like foreground, middle ground and background and thinking about if you want to have a focal point of your collage or if it's going to be more abstract and less focused. So I'm sort of going for a more sort of mirror image, sort of symmetrical kind of collage because all the imagery I have, it's largely sort of fresh produce and round uh, sort of fruits and vegetables. So that kind of lent itself to kind of a mirror sort of image symmetrical sort of composition. And you've got to think as well about sort of layering. So what can make collage interesting is how things can kind of sit, you know, both, you know, behind and in front of, of other sort of pictures. And so that's sort of a bit of an art. So it's nice to have a few layers, things kind of peeking out from behind other things, just so there's a bit of um, depth in your collage and, and something that's a bit more um, interesting in, in that way. So when you're deciding on your final composition, sort of lay everything out, you know, maybe take a photograph with your phone uh, just to remember a certain uh, setup and then you can move away from it or come back to it so you don't forget. And then commit to a final composition and then you're going to want to start sticking down with your glue. So you're going to so obviously stick from sort of bottom to top in those layers and it can be a, a you know um, bit tricky just like putting things aside where you sort of place them and then sort of putting it back but if you do have that photograph on your phone to reference um, it can be you know fairly that can be fairly helpful. So let's start, I'm going to start gluing this, um, yeah, collage down and committing to it. So I've finished my collage, I've stuck everything down, ta-da, I hope that you're equally pleased, ooh, extra bit, I hope you're equally pleased with what uh, your end result was. And uh, I think that, you know, you can make some really interesting things from otherwise very, very boring and mundane material. If you just kind of look at them um, through a different lens in a different kind of way, pictures of fresh produce and bargains at the supermarket can become, you know, something that's a little bit more uh, open than that. And I think the way in which we can use printed things that are around the house uh, to make sort of new, different um, imagery is, is a positive thing. Um, it's, you know, recycling cycling obviously and also you get to sort of spend some time making something so I hope it was enjoyable for you and I hope to see you again uh, for another uh, home project um, with me. Thank you.